All right, have you ever had one of those moments where you say something and then you immediately regret it? You know what I'm talking about? Has that ever happened to you? Be honest, go ahead, like wherever you are, raise your hand right now if you've done that before, all right? Yeah, look around, all of us have. If your hand's not up, you're a liar, okay? I would say something like turn to your neighbor and tell them about it, but if you're anything like me, you probably don't want to repeat it. Because I know I've said some pretty stupid things. And, and while they were stupid, there were usually certainly things that, that I felt and maybe even believed. But that didn't mean that I needed to say them. For example, when I was in high school, one of my friends made me really angry. We were actually fighting about something that was stupid and it, it got heated and names were being thrown around and it got ugly and I was revving up, he was revving up and at one point he said something that hurt really bad and I replied, well, you know why Courtney doesn't like you? It's because you're fat, ugly and an idiot. Yeah, at, at that point, one of my best friends decided he didn't want to talk to me again for two weeks, all right? He was my best friend, not an okay friend, my best friend, and our disagreement wasn't even about Courtney. It was about a basketball game that I had clearly won. But some silly little argument grew and grew, and eventually, I popped my top and I almost ruined a friendship. And I, I could spend tons of time telling you about the stupid things that I've said to my mom, my dad, my wife, my kids, my boss. Holy cow, like sometimes words just come out that I immediately regret. And I'm sure you've been there too. And if you haven't, well just wait, the day will come for you as well. And there's a really important lesson to be learned here. What we say, it really, really matters. Notice I didn't say what we think really matters. In fact, what we think does matter a lot, and hopefully our minds are being shaped to know Jesus more, to be more in line with the heart of Jesus. And over time, that will change us and it will change what we say. But what we say, when we react, it's almost always the wrong thing that comes out first. And that's why the Bible talks so much about words and how important they are. Because when we slow down and we allow our mouth to catch up with our mind, we choose our words more carefully. And as our mind is being transformed more into the, the mind of Christ, well, that changes the things we want to say. And why does it matter? Well, because our words can help people see love or they can wreak havoc on people. You see, words, they, they have the power to build up or destroy. They have the power to do good or bring immense and intense harm. Our words matter a lot. And if you've been here these past few weeks, we've been walking through the book of James. And we're given a challenge to read more of the Bible over the duration of this series. Whether it's right before you go to bed or when you rise in the morning or whether you bring your Bible to school and read during lunch or on your bus ride home, whatever it might be, I hope you've been able to really dive yourself into God's Word. We read and digest the Word of God. It changes how we view the world. And in James 3, well, James outlines some really important stuff about our mouth and about what we say. The entire chapter is talking about the importance of taming our tongue. And I, I'm glad the Bible describes it that way, taming your tongue. Have you ever tried to tame something before? Maybe not, maybe not yet. It's difficult, it takes time, it takes work, it takes investment. But when you tame it, like it, it's good, it's beneficial. Like my dogs, okay, I have two dogs. Blue, 80 pound, Labradoodle, he's been tamed, okay? He will not go pee in my house. I can leave him in my house for three days and he will hold it in and he will bark at the door, but he would rather die than make a mess in my house because he's a good boy, a dog that I like a lot. He has been tamed. But then you have Hazel. She's this little bitty rat of a thing, okay, 15 pound golden doodle. She's the worst. She's not tamed at all, all right? She, she's trained to go pee outside, but you know what? If she's got to hold it more than a half hour, she's like, hey, this carpet looks nice. I might as well just go there, okay? If I leave her inside for more than an hour, it's over. It's horrible. When you can learn to tame something, then that something can be used for good, and if nothing else, well, it will resist bad. And James, he, he says it this way. He starts out by reminding us, for we all stumble in many ways. Like, I, th I think that's important for us to start there because that's good news to be reminded that we all screw up. 
all right? Every single one of us. No one in this room is better than the other. We all stumble in many ways. I don't want you thinking better of yourself than you are, okay? But it's a good reminder for us that none of us are perfect. And that changes the way that we view ourselves. It's humbling. And it changes the way we view others. It allows us to offer them grace because we know that they are screw-ups just like you and me. But then James goes on to share some illustrations before getting to the punchline. He talks about a bridle in the mouth of a horse and how that allows you to control a horse. Have you ever thought about that before? This little piece of metal in the mouth of a horse allows you to control this 1,500 pound creature that otherwise could just kind of like run you over? And think about a ship. These huge ships have these little bitty rudders that allow them to control the direction of that ship. Or how a small spark can burn up an entire forest. James is trying to prove a point, and here it is. He says this in James 3, 8 through 10. He says, the tongue runs wild. It's a killer. With our tongues, we bless God our Father. And with the same tongues, we curse the men and women he made in his image. Curses and blessings out of the same mouth. My friends, this can't go on. A spring doesn't gush fresh water one day and brackish the next, does it? Apple trees don't bear strawberries, do they? Raspberry bushes don't bear apples, do they? You're not going to dip into polluted mud hole and get a cup of clear, cool water, are you? And l- listen to those words. This can't go on. You can't give cursing and blessing from the same mouth. That does not compute. It doesn't work. If you are truly trying to, to walk with God, then an important characteristic of your faith is what you say. So do some self-examination here. Is what comes from your mouth more often blessing or cursing? Are you quick to talk trash about someone else, to to call out their faults, to, to talk about them behind their back? Do you only offer the things that would bring other people down? Are your words blessing others or cursing them? May we say nice things to their face and talk about them behind their back. Well, that makes us hypocrites. Or if we spout off and allow our tongue to get the better of us to their face. Well, that, that also makes us hypocrites because that's not how God calls us to live. And James makes it clear that what we say is a clear reflection of our hearts. If your heart is aligned with God, then you should be slow to speak. You remember back to James 1, the writer said, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Why does James say that? Because he knows the tongue is a powerful tool. And those of us who are, who are not wise typically says the first thing that comes to mind. And the first thing that comes to mind is almost always the wrong thing. And the wrong thing can cause some serious problems. It can lead to destruction. It can burn down an entire forest. Think about that. Like I said a few minutes ago, how often have I said the first thing that comes to mind only to regret it? The truth is, I've said it, I'm going to say it again. It's rarely the right or best thing to say what comes to mind immediately. But instead, when I slow down and I'm slow to speak, well, that helps me to process in a way that allows me the opportunity to tame my tongue. So here in James 3, he calls us to tame the tongue. But how do we do that? He gives us the answer. It's called meekness. Or it's also described as humility. Like, Like what the heck is meekness? Meekness is us seeking all of our value from God. Not from other people around us, but we seek it from God. Therefore, setting us free of any kind of needed self promotion. Typically, the the things that we say that are putting others down, well, they're done in an effort to make more of ourselves or justify the way that we feel, to fit in, to try and make someone else look worse in hopes that we may look better. But when we put our trust in God, we no longer worry about how we look in front of others because we know we are loved by God and that's the most important thing. It's no longer about validation for others because we've been validated by God. You see, we seek meekness by pursuing the character of God, or as James describes it, wisdom from above. James 3, 17 and 18, it says, But the wisdom that comes from heaven is, first of all, pure. 
than peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere, peacemakers who sow in peace, reap a harvest of righteousness. When we see the wisdom of God, and when we seek the wisdom of God, well, that means we're gonna slow down and we're gonna think about God's character before we speak. Because we know that the words we say are meant to be a reflection of God's character. We'll be slow to speak because we need to filter what's happening around us through God's mind. And when you don't say the first thing, instead you slow down and process what's happening, and you attempt to do so through the lens by which God sees the world, well, that's it's gonna change your response. Galatians calls us to live out the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control, faithfulness, goodness, all those things, they're, they're love. And when we filter what we say through that lens, well, that has us thinking about who God is and the way God would respond to this situation because he calls us to be his follower, his disciple. What that means is to be an apprentice of God, to live like he would live. And so when we filter what we say through that lens, well, it changes the way we would respond. We start to measure our words. We're, we're not as quick to speak. And when we speak, we speak with meekness, asking how can I use my words to build up, not tear down, because I don't need to build myself up because I realize who I am in Christ. We start to ask, how can I keep from lighting the fire? We start to, to ask how we can use the, the bridle and the mouth of the horse to go in the right direction. We start to ask, how can I use my words right now to make much of God? Your words, they carry a lot of power. And like uh, Uncle Ben said to Peter Parker, AKA Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. Friends, your words carry power. Choose to be responsible because your words, they can bring destruction or they can bring life. Choose life.